Hello there guys and welcome back to another Epic and Extra Maths video. In this video we're taking a look how we might differentiate sine x. Many of you may know, I'll just, you know, I'll spoil it, I'll tell you the secrets. The derivative of sine x is cos x. Okay, so if that's all you wanted to know, then there you go, you're finished. The derivative of sine x is going to be cos x. But allow us to prove it. Why is the derivative of sine x cos x. Why is that true? That's what we're doing here. We need two things. We need to know two things. One, we need to know that the derivative of any function f of x, f prime of x, that's what that uh, symbol there is, is it, like it's an apostrophe, we say f prime of x, the derivative is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. That is the definition of the derivative of a function. There is a video where I will, where I have derived this formula as well. So you can check that video out as well if you're not sure why that's true. Also, I have also derived a video. Um, I've shown a vid I've, or I've made a video rather deriving the addition formula for sine of a plus b. This states that, and we'll need this as well, this states that sine of a plus b is identical to sine of a cos of b plus sine of b cos of a. This is also true. And, you know, we should, I show why. It's a little bit sort of crazy. It's got some complex numbers in it. But that's that. So I'll link both of those in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. So we want to differentiate sine x. We can use the formula for differentiating a function. So if we say that f of x, that's what f of x is, that's going to be sine x. What we want is f prime of x. That's literally what we're looking for. We want this. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, f prime of x using the definition of differentiation is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of, and of course we know it's f of x plus h, where well, f of x is sine x. So what f of x plus h means is wherever you see an x, replace it with an x plus h. So sine of x is going to become sine of x plus h like this. And you can see this is why we need the addition formula in a second. Minus f of x, well, f of x is sine x, so we're going to take away sine x, and we're going to divide by h. And what we want to do is we want to see what happens as this thing approaches uh, zero. As, as h approaches zero, what is actually happening to this whole big thing uh, right here that's just chilling out here? What happens? Well, when you just plug h in, it's not particularly helpful, because it does give you a sine x minus sine x on the top. If h was 0, it would be sine of x plus 0 minus sine of x. That gives you 0. And as h approaches 0, you just get 0 on the denominator. So it's a 0 divided by 0 situation. You can't really do much to it. So what we need to do is we need to put this in a form that we can deal with and manage. So we're going to change sine of x plus h into something else. We're going to use the addition formula. So we know that if, if we have an a and a b, sine of a plus b is sine a cos b plus sine b cos a. We can do this with any letter. We can do it with x and h if we'd like to. So let's do that right here. So we can also say that f prime of x, that's what we're looking for, the derivative, is equal to the limit of h, as h approaches zero, that's still there. But this time, instead of um, sine of x plus h, we're going to replace that with sine of x, sine, or cos rather, of h uh, plus sine of h cos of x. Okay, that is sine of x plus h using the addition formula. We're simply substituting. We're basically saying uh, x is our a in the addition formula and h is our b. We're substituting that in. And we still need to take away sine x, don't we? We still need to take sine x away because that is being taken away there. So we take away our sine x just like that. And remember, guys, this is still being divided by h. Okay. At this point, you might say, well, hold on. You know, you haven't really made this simpler. What, you know, what's going on here? What are you doing? But actually, we can do something a little bit crazy at this stage. What, one thing that we can do to start with is we can, we can split this up into some fractions. We can also factorize a little bit. So we can do some factorizing. So f of x is equal to the limit. We have to keep writing limit, guys. We have, it's very important. It's an important part of the problem. Don't not write your limits in. So notice, I'll come up here so you can see, so my head's not blocking it. Notice, guys, how this term here and this term here on the end 
both contain sine x's. They both have a sine x. So ignoring the middle term, ignore the middle term, let's factorize just those two terms at the left and the right. Let's factorize. So what I'll do is I'll factorize the, uh, uh, the sine x out, so sine x. And then this is going to be the first term. So sine x times is by, well, that's cos h. Okay. And then minus, we're going to be doing minus 1, aren't we? Hopefully you can see that if you do sine x times cos h, that gives you sine x cos h. And sine x times minus 1, that gives you minus sine x. So we are accounting for those two terms there. We still have, though, this middle term here, sine h cos x. So we still need to add that on. Okay. So sine h cos x. That hasn't gone anywhere. That's still staying with us right now. And it's still being divided by h. We haven't changed that. H is it's still there. But you'll see why we're doing this in a moment. Okay, so now what you can do at this point is you can say, okay, right, let's rewrite f of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero. Again, it's very important that we include that because we're going to need to deal with it in a second. And what we can do at this point is we can, what I, what I want to do is I want to, all of the stuff that's got h's in it, I want to write that as the fraction. So cos h minus one, I'm going to sort of move stuff around a little bit. So st stick with me for a second, guys. Cos h minus 1 divided by cos, sorry, divided by h. That's fine. And then I'm just going to have that being times by sine x. Okay. So uh, that's not all of it, but that is like this first term up here, right? So what we're doing is we're kind of moving it around a little bit, but we're saying, okay, cos h minus 1, that's over the h, and it's all being times by sine x. So I'm going to write sine x on the right-hand side, on the other side. All I've done is I've rearranged. I've brought the h down there. I've moved stuff around. Nothing's no, no operation mathematically has been performed. I've just moved stuff around. As for the second term, I want the h part to be the fraction. So I'm going to write sine h, also divided by h, and then times cos x. So again, that's going to be our second term. And you can see that I'll sort of move again. You can see that right there. So sine h cos x over h. That's the second term that's happening right here. I'm just moving stuff around. I'm saying, okay, the sine h divided by h times cos x. The reason why we're doing this, again, nothing mathematical is happening right now. The reason why we're doing this is because it allows us to see what's going on easier as h approaches zero. Okay, so you'll see that in a second. So guys, we need to think about what happens when h approaches zero for essentially cos h and sine h, okay? What happens when h approaches zero? You can use a calculator if you want to. So we can say f of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero, just like that. Okay, so what happens here is we have a cos h minus one divided by h. Now, you might know, actually, that we can use small angle approximations to approximate uh, sine x or sine h, cos h, or theta, or x, doesn't matter what the variable is. We can approximate these values. So one thing that we can do, for example, is we can rewrite cos h as an approximation. So again, you might know this, you might not, but we can say as long as h is very small, which it is, h in this situation is indeed very small. The reason why we know h is small is because we're saying h is approaching zero. So h is really, really, really small. In fact, it's so small that our approximation is basically going to become an exact value because h is so infinitely close to zero, it stops even being an approximation. It's exact. So here, here it is. Cos h is approximately equal to 1 minus h squared over 2. That's just a fact. It's just true, roughly, if h is small, if h is very small. Okay, so that's that's our cos h. And then we're going to do minus 1 because minus 1 was already there. And that's all being divided by h. Okay, good. And it's still being timesed by sine x, isn't it? It's still being timesed by sine x. Okay, second term, sine h. Sine h is a bit easier. Sine h, it, as long as it's very small, it is a, which it is in this situation, it is approximately equal to just h. So we can say as long as h is small, which again it is because h is approaching zero, sine h is actually just h. Okay, so when h is small, sine h is roughly h. If h is infinitely small, then we can say sine h is h. Okay, and then we divide by h still because there is still a h there. And then we times that by cos x. Amazing. Brilliant. Okay, 
now we can simply uh, cancel some stuff out. So this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, okay, well, 1 minus h squared over 2 minus 1. Well, one thing that we can notice is that that 1 and that 1 cancel out. And also we can notice that we get, we basically end up with minus h squared divided by 2 and then divided by h. Okay, so h squared divided by 2 and then divided by h. Well, that's actually just going to be, because we can, again, we can use index laws, that's actually just going to be minus h divided by 2, okay? So h squared divided by 2 divided by h is just h divided by 2, okay? Because it just reduces the power of h by 1, and that is then times by sine x. Amazing, guys, amazing. Brilliant. And then the next term, well, h divided by h, what's that? h divided by h, that can simplify. We don't need to take the limit just yet. That can simplify. h divided by h, well, as long as h isn't actually equal to 0, it's not actually equal to 0. It's infinitely close to 0, but it's not actually equal to 0, which means we can divide h by h without any problems. So that's just 1 times cos x. Amazing performance, everyone. So there we go. There's cos x right there chilling out. Now, at this stage, this is where we actually do take the limit as h goes to zero, we're actually going to take a limit here. And so what we can do is we simply look at everything we've got and say, okay, if h was equal to zero, what would everything in those brackets become? Well, it would be zero divided by two, okay, that's just zero, times sine x, well, that's just zero, plus cos x. And that's not being times by any h's. So actually, we just get, we don't need to write the limit anymore, we've already taken the limit, this is simply equal to cos x, just like that, okay? So then we can conclude, we can say that f prime of x is simply equal to cos x, just like that. Um, and so if you also wanna write it formally, you can say that if you, if you wanna write it in like dy dx notation, the derivative of sine x, therefore, is simply equal to cos x, just like that. And we have essentially shown that this is the case. That is how you differentiate sine x. That's the true way to do it. Uh, and I'll also do a video differentiating cos x, but actually I'll spoil it right now. The derivative of cos x is just negative sine x. So it kind of is going to go in a bit of a circle. Um, so, uh, but I will still do a video on showing why it's true. It's a very similar method though. Thank you guys so much for watching. I highly appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.